Hello, thank you for watching this video. It is part of our Before You Make a Start series. The aim is to help you be aware of things that may occur when extending your home and help you be better prepared. This video is about drainage, underground drainage, building over sewers, agreements and statutory water authorities. When they are relevant, what's acceptable and what isn't. Building over sewers is part of approved document H of the building regulations. Building over agreements are required when you are building within 3 metres or over a sewer on a sewage undertaker's records. Furthermore, in September 2010 the government decided that most private sewers, lateral drains, pumping stations that form part of a sewer or lateral drain that connect to a sewer network should be transferred to the ownership of the regulated sewage company in England and Wales. If we look at a diagram of ownership Previously, this was the case. We have the house in blue, the perimeter of the site, the gardens, and then the footpath and the road. In this case, previously, only the roads were public sewers. Everything around was a private and responsible of the homeowner. From 2010, anything shared became a public sewer, in which case agreements are required. You'll have to apply to the sewage undertakers to build over or close to the sewer that is either on their records or identified as a shared sewer. There will be a fee, an application form and drawings of the position of the existing sewer and how the sewer pipes will be dealt with during the work, i.e. the proposed layout. This will be called the building over agreement. This, this will contain conditions which have to be carried out before, during and once the work is finished. To find out if you have a sewer, check your deeds or contact your sewage undertaker. You can also purchase sewer maps from various utility providers. This is an example of a sewer map. Again we can see the properties outlined and then the sites outlined. And the brown line there is a sewer pipe, the black dots are manholes running. As you can see it runs down the road there. It doesn't pick up every single drainage on every house. It gives us the size of the pipe and it gives us the main position of where it runs. Please bear in mind that underground sewage is not always recorded or 100% accurate. The best way to identify the position and the depth of the sewer is by surveys and CCTV drainage surveys. It's also worth noting the drainage systems. There are two types of drainage system. The foul, which is your toilet, bath, sink, washing machine, shower, which is classed as dirty water. And then the surface water, which is your rain water, clean water. There are various types of systems on how the surface water and the foul water are taken away from the property. A combined system where both surface water run into the same pipe. A separate system where the foul system and the surface water run into separate pipes and then into the main system. And then there's alternatives like the foul will generally always run into the main system but surface water can go into what's a soak away. If we look at scene one, we've got a detached house, unextended, and here we've got the two types of drainage systems, the foul, which we've indicated in red, and the surface water, which I've indicated in green. We've got two types of manholes. We've got one on the corner there, which is square, could be brick built. And then we've got a pot chamber, what we class as, there, uh, which is receiving the other part of the pipe. If I take away the walls of the house, and you can have a look and see the system internally. I haven't gone into the extent of every waste pipe. I've just shown the main system so we could have a downstairs toilet there. This would then serve maybe the kitchen and the bathroom above. They would come through the foundations and then they would connect onto the existing runs underground. So if I now add an extension single story to the rear, this covers one of the manholes. As part of the agreement, the sewage undertaker puts various conditions will be added on to their approval. For example, 
no manholes within the footprint, no imposed loads on the pipe, no connections or one connection if it's a boundary to boundary extension or unfeasible to remove the connection. Sometimes a pipe may be replaced and a post CCTV survey would be required to be carried out. In this case the manhole would have to be moved from within the footprint. So if we take a look underneath, that's where it is at the moment. Now that manhole would have to be removed. So we take that away and that's what the connection would look like. It wouldn't be allowed to stay internally. In this case it would be difficult to move the connection outside the footprint. The sewer would have to be diverted uh, to outside the footprint of the extension which isn't always possible. So now let's take an example. Let's say the sewer pipe is set back further. There are no set dimensions for where sewer pipes are positioned uh, and there's no set layout for how they are. But if we add the rear extension again, the extension is directly over the pipe now. So if we take a look at that side here, it's over the chamber and the pipe which is a big problem. If I remove the foundations, you can see where it is, it runs actually under the wall, which is unacceptable. Furthermore, let's add a side extension to it as well, which could happen. That then covers the other manhole. We're now building over both manhole and access chamber. The direction change is being built over. Again, this is a big no-no. The water authorities generally don't accept this. So our option would have to be, in this case, to divert the sewer. The only way to deal with this, with the acceptance of the water authority, is to divert the sewer around the extension. This would have to be agreed with the statutory water authorities. They would be required. They would require detailed drawings including the sewer position, the depths, the diameter, the gradients to show how the system would work. As you can see the internal soil and vent pipe would have to be extended to a new chamber uh, and connections at the direction change. This scenario may even need a chamber at the position here in the neighbours uh, land as it's right up to the boundary. If we take a look at the underside of how it's been changed so the pipe's been extended, the new manhole's been repositioned, we've got an angle there, ideally we'd want another connection there unless there was down here because we could access it from both ways and then the other manhole is repositioned over this way. The main focus with sewer pipes is that they adequately take away wastewater from the house to the main sewers. They are accessible to prevent blockage, hence the need for manhole and extra access chambers. This video is to demonstrate the effects sewers can have on an extension and how extensions may affect the drainage system. The drainage system and installation is normally designed by engineers or architects in compliance with the building regulations. This considers the depth, the gradient, the access, the pipe size, the flow requirements and the number of houses it receives. The sewer agreement applications are normally required at building control submission stage. In my opinion, it's sometimes worth identifying potential issues with drainage at early stages. The sewer authorities can stop buildings being erected over sewers and manholes, regardless of them having planning permission if it wasn't checked in the early stages. Sewer pipes around the property are normally up to around 225 mil, that's 9 inches. When sewers over these sizes are present, standoff distances come into play, meaning you may not be able to build within a certain distance of the sewer, for example say 5 metres. It's also when, uh, worth mentioning uh, some investigation into the drainage system and the position of the manholes early on in the project to prevent any delays. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe this video.